Today on Rare Spirits and Gear, I attempt to recreate Tom DeLonge's signature guitar tone from Blink-182. As far as punk rock guitar tones goes, I think one of my favorites is Tom DeLonge's guitar tone. It was a really cool mixture of sounding heavy and gained out, but not at the same time. There was a lot of dynamics in Tom's playing and his guitar tone, and Blink-22 has obviously had several different guitar tones over their existence and over Tom's uh, tenure in the band. My favorite guitar tone of his is best personified on the Enema of the State record, which I think is just such a great, crisp, cutting guitar tone that has, like I said, a lot of dynamics, a lot of squish, but it sounds huge in the context of a mix. So today I'm going to attempt to recreate Tom's guitar tone from the Enema of the State record, specifically all the small things, which is what I think of when I think of Blink-182 and Tom's guitar tone. Now, in order to recreate Tom's guitar tone, we are going to have to understand the pieces that went into creating it in the first place. For amplifiers, circa 1999, 2000, all the way up through 2003-ish, Tom was using a two-channel triple rectifier from Maze of Boogie, and uh, he would mix that with a Marshall JCM 900 4100 head, and he would use uh, Maze of Boogie cabinets 212 and 412, and this was predominantly his tone. He would plug straight in to the amplifiers, and as explained in a Guitar Center article uh, back in, uh, I think it was 2000, he explained that he put the JCM 900 on the clean channel, but cranked the gain all the way up, and that would give him his upper mid-range and his top end clarity while using the bottom end and the lower mids of the rectifier. So this clues us in to kind of what he was thinking as far as his guitar tone goes. Now, as far as the Enema of the State record goes, to my ears, it sounds heavy on the side of the Mesa Boogie rectifier with just a little bit of the Marshall, if that's in fact what was used on that actual song. Oftentimes in the studio, you will use what sounds best. So there's nothing saying that they use that setup for the studio, but to my ears, sounds like rectifier, sounds like a Vintage 30 speakers, and it sounds like a nice old hot pickup. But interesting to note, Tom did not use his Stratocasters on the Enema of the State album. He used his Billabong Gibson Les Paul loaded with an Invader as he recorded with that guitar quite a bit. And I also know the guy uh, that was at Gibson at the time to that uh, gave him both of his Gibson Les Pauls. And I have been able to confirm that he did the, indeed use the Les Paul for most of, if not all of the Enema of the State record. So now my attempt at recreating Tom's legendary guitar tone will start with a 2001 Fender Tom DeLonge signature guitar with a bridge invader um, in the bridge position. This is a great sounding uh, guitar. I will be plugging straight in to my Mesa Boogie dual rectifier, close enough to the triple. And I will also be blending it with the orange Rockerverb uh, Mark III 50 watt head and both of the amps will be going into a Mesa Boogie 212, and I will be using two condenser microphones, both by Lawton, an LS-208 and an LS-308. And those microphones will be going into a Neumann V402 uh, microphone preamp into my Universal Audio Apollo 8. That's really the core of the tone as I have been able to get to it. So without further ado, let's try to recreate Tom's guitar tone. All right, so here we are in Logic Pro X. I have my bass, my drums, and my eight guitar tracks. And the key to Tom's guitar tone really is layering and multiple mics, I found. Um, I'm just gonna start from the top and work our way down to the bottom. Uh, first, the bass tone is MIDI bass, and it is Submission Audio's punk bass, which is actually um, sampled using uh, a Mark Hoppus signature bass, which is pretty cool. And it sounds great. Mm -hmm. 
All I'm really doing to that is just kind of carving the EQ because the on the Blink record, the bass is not crazy, crazy processed. It's really, it's pretty sparsely processed. I added some saturation to kind of simulate a tape machine with a T-Rex Saturator X. It came in with some Slate Infinity EQ to kind of carve out the, the highs and the low lows because again, Mark Hoppus's tone doesn't have a massive amount of low end compared to like, you know, a metal bass tone. Then I'm coming in with T-Rex EQP1A to further, I'm really trying to dial back that low end. Without it, it was just too boomy and covered the kick, which also cannot be super, super crazy metal sounding. And then finally I'm coming in with a compressor. That's, that's really it for the bass tone. Uh, the drums, again, this will never replicate Travis Barker. Not even gonna try. I did pitch up the snare on Get Good P4 Kit, and I thought the drums sound really, really great. Um, here's how they sound by themselves. Again, I know these sound way over processed compared to the actual record, which again, they weren't doing crazy amounts of processing back in 1998 when it was recorded, but I'm not going to cover, uh, I'm not going to replicate Travis Barker's feel, um, and style anyway. So you know what, whatever I did pitch up the snare though, because again, his snare is uh, quite pitched up like a piccolo, uh, which is the sound of blink, honestly. Um, now let's get to the guitars. So the guitars in the green are the dual rectifier. Um, I have the two DIs up here, left performance, right performance. And then I have two mics on the cabinet. So I have my left performance and then my right performance with the dual rectifier. And then I have the orange, colored in orange for you guys, left and right. And the bulk of the heavy lifting for the guitar tone is the rectifier. I'm gonna turn off my processing. We'll get to the processing in just a second. And I'm also gonna mute the orange and let you hear this in a mix with no processing, just the rectifier. Sounds pretty close. I'm blending in the orange, because I don't have a JCM 900, I'm blending it really, really quiet. So I'm gonna go ahead and isolate the guitars. Here's how, here's how the orange sounds by itself. Very sparse, but it has a nice upper mid that the, the boogie does not have. So here's the Mesa by itself. And I'm just going to turn I'm gonna turn the orange all the way down and then I'm gonna blend it in. You guys can hear what the orange is doing. Hear that real nice mid-range come in? Um, it doesn't sound like it's doing a lot. It's actually doing a lot. Um, everything is phase correct, but it's still it adds that real nice upper mid that the boogie cannot do without like a, an external EQ or something like that. So coming in with the guitar tone, I'm using three different plugins. That's it. I'm using a universal audio SSL E channel strip. I am adding some top end. I'm taking out some low mids and I'm also taking out a little bit of 6k because um, it got a little honky and I'm adding a tiny bit of low end and then carving out the highs and lows with the lows and high pass filter. Here's what that sounds like. I'll turn it off, I'll leave it off. I'll start playing it, I'll turn it on. Tom's guitar has a lot of snap, a lot of attack, and the additional high end from the SSL is very, very nice. 
Next, I'm coming in with uh, an Ampex ATR-102 tape machine. They recorded everything on tape back then and it adds just a real nice saturation and warmth without scooping it too much, like the oxide tape would, for example. This is also from Universal Audio and it sounds amazing. I'm actually gonna turn this on up here and then click the through and you'll hear the difference when I turn it on. It's adding a lot of uh, top end, uh, just a kind of a nice analog sizzle to it almost. It sounds really nice in the mix. And then finally, I'm coming in with um, an LA-2A in the limit mode. I am just leveling off the guitar just a little bit like they probably did as well uh, to get those dun 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 to be really effective. It's not really doing a ton. It's barely even kissing the guitars, but when you take it out, you do notice a little bit uh, of panache goes away. And uh, that is basically it. That is the Enema of the State guitar tone as I could recreate it as best as I could. I don't think I got too far from it. I definitely captured the essence. I think my shortcomings is not having Travis Barker. Oh well. I definitely, you know, if you have a rectifier, an old two channel Mesa Boogie rectifier and an Invader equipped guitar, you're gonna get 90% there in my opinion. All the pickable links down below in the description. You've been wonderful, I have been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, please consider subscribing. It helps me help you and then in turn you get more stuff to watch and also I have all sorts of stuff down in the description of this video. Sweetwater giveaway stuff, there's all sorts of links to all sorts of things so consider uh, checking that out as well if you're gonna hang but if you don't hang all good I still love you.